So here we go again. In the previous session, we have set up the application, the project, Smart Blazor. We have initialized all the things that we need to uh, start with the logic and the actions of that this application implements. So, and the first one, and uh, the most important one, which is the authentication system, which consists of login and register, getting a new user or login an existing user, then implementing this flow on the client side. It's not only about sending the request, fetching the token and store it. It's also about how you can teach the Blazor application that, hey, this user is logged in and those are the attributes of this user or not. So now if we go to the API project here in the Swagger UI or the documentation, make sure you are under the version two because they are totally different implementations and uh, type of responses. So here we have the login, let's open it. And as you can see, it takes uh, two very simple object that consists of email and password. And then this one called login request and the response. One of the most uh, beautiful thing about the new API that all the responses returns a unified response or the uh, or unified object. So in case of any error, all the endpoints and all the error cases, like it's 400, 500, whatever it is, it retrieves an API error response, which is a message errors and is success. The message is just like the general uh, uh, general message to describe what happened. And errors are a array of strings that in case like there is um, multi errors or multi things happen in this requests. So <clears throat> this is in case of the errors. And in case of success, all the responses returns API response object, which is message, is success, and value, which is optional. Sometimes it exists, sometimes it's not, uh, which contain the payload actually, or the object that we are expecting from the API. And this one is the unified driver. So now you can see this across all the stuff. So all value message is success, and the error is this one, which is great actually. This simplified the implementation of and callings for the API from the client and make things. Uh, much easier and better. Now let's test actually the login to see how it works and uh, then how we are going to implement this in Blazor. So I will go switch to Postman. So here, go ahead and click on your request. And it's a post request, right? If you check here, it's a post request. And let's type the URL. Planner app, login. Now let's go to the body. So the URL is pretty simple, just this route in addition to this is the rest of the API. So this is the object, it takes email, right? So I have an email from the old version of this course, which is, uh, yeah, make sure to set this one as JSON. And password is test.123. Let's send the request and see what we are going to accept. Here we go, look at this. We have API response, value message in this access, and the value is a login response object, which is token and expiry date. So this is the token, which is a JSON of tokens. If we copy it and I go to jwt.ms, if I paste that here, so you can see that this is the content of the token. The middle part of the token, which is from this point until this one, actually the payload or the claims. And the claims are a set of key values that represents the current user or the current logged in user within this, uh, within this token. So as you can see, the claim is just like email address and this one name identifier, which is the name identifier, the ID, given name, surname, and there is a set of like expiration issuer and audience, but like those just for the validity of the token, while this one is are the real user or the property that represent the user. So the login operation will happen, like the user will request the log, uh, access token after he clicks the login, we will fetch that token, put it in the uh, local storage, and then the check of the login will happen through an authentication state provider that will check if there is a token, then read it, decode the token, take those claims, create a user out of them, and give it to the Blazor app to know that the user is logged in, which is great. Now, 
let's go back for I just run this application let's stop it and before doing so let me push all those uh, comments of uh, of the implementation so create the project and initialize mod blazer and let's click push that's great now it's pushed so we can go ahead and start to implement this and yeah before we <coughs> will proceed if you don't have an account to test this make sure just to duplicate this one go to register here you can see register copy this and go to body paste it here and let's test this one give it a name Like this is a password that contains capital letter, small letter, and so on. And if you click send. Oh, user or password is invalid. Yeah, we should, this one should be register, not login. User with the email is already exists. That's cool. Let's make it five, send. Okay, here we go. But if you notice, this is an API response without payload. So there is no value, just message and the success because the register simply like doesn't return anything so if i try to click send again i will get api error response the same but i have errors over here so user with the email blah 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 already exists which is good so now to get started we have first to create the model that's required for the project and i will i will put them in a shared class library so we can use this in all other dotnet clients like windows uwp .NET MAUI, whatever it is, you will have a separated course, by the way, for .NET MAUI for the same project. I will call this project Planner App dot shared, just like this. Next, and just click Create. So here we are going to put the responses and the models of our API. So let's click Delete. Okay, that's cool. Now click Save. And let's, I'll create two folders here, one called responses and the other called models, DTOs, whatever you want. You can, you are free to call it the way you want. I will call this uh, one models, just like this. So that's great. Now in the responses, I will add a class, call it API response. This one will contains the response object that we have seen here, as you can see, if you check oath, register, login. So this one, for example, the value message and the success or in the register one, which doesn't have a value, just message and the success because there is no payload required. So and to create it, it's simply public string message, get and set public pool success that's good now the other object is the one that the same but it has a, which is in a generic and has a payload or a value within it so i would call it the same name api response but it's going to be generic and it will inherit from api response so right now it has these two properties in addition for this it will has value get and set and the last one is public class api error response but let's not create this one like this let's see the magic of visual studio by going for this one and you see this json sample of this object that calls api error response we can basically copy this then instead of pasting that like this what you can do is go to edit and go to paste special paste json as a class so it turned that json object into a class and paste it for you just like this wow this is awesome so we can just rename this api error response message 
errors a success now let's move it for another file that's cool now we have the responses available for us of all the apis and that's that's great or all the endpoints now the next step is actually to move on to this project and start implementing initializing the http client and initialize the json web tokens authentication city provider that's responsible for managing the authentication stuff of blazor and uh, basically then we can test the login process so let's go ahead and do this